Hello and welcome to Weekend Business Report. Thanks for joining the show. I'm Kenil Gale. BATV made another historic step this week with the launch of Jamaica's first business-themed current affairs show. We'll tell you more in a few minutes. But right now, Angela Ladley is here with some of the major business news stories BATV covered this week. Andrew. Thanks, Kenil. Finance Minister Audley Shaw is admitting that there will likely be another tax package come next year. Minister Shaw says the new taxes would be modest but necessary. He was speaking on BATV's new current affairs program, On Point, which was launched on Thursday. Here's more. What assurances can you give that come next year, when it's time to step up to the 1.5, that there won't be some other things that are detected and more tweaking required and you won't be able to deliver on the actual 1.5 No, next we year. will. No. We will deliver on the 1.5 because whatever mitigating steps uh, that will be, will be needed will be taken. Phase 2 of the government's income tax plan will take effect next year, but the final phase of the PAYE tax plan will also carry along with it another tax package. Minister Shaw says the tax package will not be heavy, but will help to fill the gap in the budget. Next year, we, we will have to have another modest tax package, mm -hmm. yes, in order to accommodate uh, that uh, second phase. Now, it's either going to be a tax package or if we are able to generate enough revenue from tax compliance, which we are working on, and other initiatives, then a tax package becomes, uh, you put it in the reserve, that if we have to go to it, we go to it. If we don't have to go to it, then we don't go to it. The minister says while his administration would like to implement the second phase without a new tax package, this can only happen if current revenue compliance improves. Well, no, like I said, if we have to go to a modest tax package, if we have to go to it, because remember, there's time between now and then when compliance measures that we are looking at will, will, would have tripped in. And you need to understand something, for instance. I can now let you know that to the end of June, the June quarter, we were some $8 billion ahead, ahead of, target. of our target but on revenue. And Mr. Shaw explained the current situation regarding tax compliance in Jamaica. Only about a quarter of the entire labor, working, employed labor force actually pays income taxes right now. A quarter of the employed labor force. Which is so the 1.15. Okay? Which is 800,000 so people. Thank you very yes, much. Yes. So we re that is why the IMF says they thought that our move was bold and essential. Both Jamaica National Building Society, JNBS, and Victoria Mutual Building Society, VMBS, try to reassure customers that they are taking measures to address the impact of loss of correspondent banking relationships in the U.S. and Europe. Representatives from both institutions were addressing the media at a press conference in Kingston, hosted by the Jamaican Association for the Resettlement of Returning Residents. Anthony Morgan reports. Both financial institutions went to great lengths to reassure customers that they're working to ensure a smooth transition with their current U.K. banking partner and the bank that is to take its place. This as the two local banks try to deal with fallout from the correspondent banking issue. They say the termination of the current partner might create losses for both societies. However, the aim is to secure customers so that there is minimal impact for them. Executive of Government Relations and Public Policy at JNBS, Anika Miller, says the bank is keeping its customers updated. JNBS is committed to assisting members with this transition and we will continue to communicate with all our members particularly Jamaicans in the diaspora, to update and outline the options which are available to them. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to assure all our members, especially our UK members, that Jamaica National will continue to help you to find a way. Meanwhile, Senior Vice President of Group Legal Compliance and Corporate Secretary at VMBS, Kerry Gay Brown, says their bank will continue to operate in an open and transparent manner. During a transition period when you change correspondent bankers, you have to undergo a review of the regulatory framework again. This takes time and it is important that we communicate clearly with our members the process. And so 
the interim measures that we have put in place in relation to members is aimed at advising them as to the steps that we will take to ensure that they can continue to access their funds regardless of where they're located, whether overseas or in Jamaica. However, this does take some time and we do appreciate that there will be some concern because with any change, there's always concern. In the meantime, Vice President, Group Marketing and Corporate Affairs at VMBS, Vivian Bailey Hay, says the strategies being employed should address the concerns of its members. So what we're doing is that we're actually, we've actually started communicating with our members in the UK. We started sending out letters on Monday outlining the new measures that are in place. We do have alternate arrangements in place now, and so these letters will inv include all the necessary details. It will, for all the, the various methods that you ut utilize to send funds, whether to your accounts here in Jamaica or whether it's through electronic transactions, all the details are outlined in the letters. And they would include things like the new bank that we're going to be utilizing, account numbers, the steps necessary that you would need to take. And one of the things that we want to encourage you to do is to act quickly. Residents of the Jamaica Association for the Resettlement of Returning Residents, Percival Latouche, says the organization's members need protection from the Customs Department. Mr. Latouche says returning residents are finding it difficult to claim the concessions granted to them by the government. Here's more. Mr. Latouche says many returning residents are being pressured by the Customs Department to provide what he calls irrelevant documents before they can claim concessions due to them based on their returning status. Custom has put up on their website one third, or one, wait, one third of the information. But when the return resident reach inside here after going on the website, read the website, take up whatever is needed, and come on the way in transit. Custom change that website. Mr. Latouche says many returning residents are being harassed in the process and are required to pay excessive amounts to retrieve their possessions. Written by Custom itself. Boxes of worn clothes by Custom. 170,225 26 dollars worn clothes now custom is now scraping the bottom of the barrel worn clothes is cricket bat and bag is cricket, cricket, cricket because you play cricket 48,000 a returning resident, Janet Constable Walker, says she is still waiting to hear from the Customs Department regarding an issue that also saw an agent dissecting her private affairs. Now, I presented a, a document to substantiate my residency abroad. Now, this document is over 40 pages long and confidential. And confidential. I highlighted the sections which she needs to see which is from the Home Office and the court in, in the UK. I highlighted the sections that would be of relevance to her to say she has been in the country since year 2000 and what has happened to date. Now, Miss, the lady in charge sat before me. I was in that office for over two hours. She perused my entire 40-page document. Mr. Latouche says he has received many complaints from other residents and the matter is creating a problem for not only these residents but for the island which these persons are trying to return to and provide certain assistance which the nation needs. That's the news for now. I'll be back later with more. For now, Kanil, it's back to you. Thanks so much, Andrew. Now at BATV, we're serious about business and that was evident on Thursday when we launched the newest program to our lineup with the premiere of On Point. On Point is our current affairs show, which will be dissecting the issues affecting the business community and the economy every week. The show's launch took place in Kingston on Thursday with a premiere watch party which saw sponsors loading the effort. Let's take a look. Shh. 
Good evening and welcome to this, your very first episode of On Point. BATV's newest show, On Point, is a first in Jamaica where an entire hour of local television programming will be consistently dedicated to the ventilating of issues specific to Jamaica's business environment. Each week, the show will get major players to discuss the issues. Jamaica Observer's Danville Walker called the On Point initiative trailblazing. It's what we are about, news in the Observer, and we're looking forward to any organization like Business Access TV that widens the channels of delivery of news about business. I think that, you know, those of us my age and a bit older, maybe like Dennis, um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> we want to see, you know, far more discussions about business and the points of view so that the, the role models that we have are put up there for the generation that's coming behind us. On Point is breaking new ground, catering to a niche and wider underserved audience. It's always great to see an innovative program because there's a little bit of a shortage of really, really informative business and current affairs programming. So anytime anything like that is introduced to the landscape, we have to applaud the efforts of people that are trying to make these efforts because, of course, sharing this information with this generation as well as those coming up is always very important and of course you have to be doing it in a way that is also yes going to impart knowledge but also keep them engaged as well meanwhile gary butch hendrickson points out that batv has been able to shine a well-needed light on the issues affecting businesses in jamaica i want to encourage you to tell it like it is i want to encourage you to have Jamaican people understand the problems that businesses face. Because all too often, it is thought that, well, everything is cool. It's not cool. It's just that it is not for business people to go out problems in, in, in outside. It is not in our nature. When you come along and start to expose this now and give, the, give us a chance to and I don't want to use the word vent, but give us a chance to share with other Jamaicans the challenges that we face in our everyday life. Then it becomes more understandable for bureaucracy to be so bureaucratic. I think we have to change the discussion a little bit. And I think you've done a good job of doing that. In the meantime, BATV's managing director, Garth Walker, says a current affairs program was essential to be added to the BATV suite of programs. We believe that the channel needed something weekly, dissecting the various business issues that affect the economy from all sectors, and who else better to reinforce and deliver it than the dynamic duo of the walking encyclopedia, Dennis Chung, <laughs> and the charismatic journalist, Khalil Reynolds. He says the station is giving businesses the platform they've always longed for. Business Access TV is recanonizing how business is consumed in Jamaica. One of our programs called Corporate Events has covered approximately 160 business events since we have launched, spanning from expos, conferences, workshops, product launches, seminars, and summits all over the island. Our mandate is to showcase business from all sectors and sizes. 65% of these events would have not gotten the exposure or coverage through video prior to the launch of Bay TV. Now be sure to catch On Point this Thursday at 8 p.m. Company news is up next, plus stock market numbers from across the world. Then later, it's not an Olympic sport, but one entrepreneur is ensuring that you have all you need to compete. There will be our returns after this break. Welcome back to Weekend Business Report. Here is Jason Mu Young with this week's company news. The Jamaica Stock Exchange says its board of directors have decided to change its accounting policies regarding the recognition of its land and buildings in its financial statements. The change to be made is from the cost model to the revaluation re model for land and buildings. The JSC says this was necessary as the revaluation re model is considered best practice for listed companies and will present a more realistic view of its assets, liabilities and equity. 
This accounting policy change will result in an increase of the JSC's total assets by approximately $141 million. Red Stripe says it's now processing a second order of beer to ship to Australia. This after the company sent the first shipment in June. Red Stripe says the order for the second shipment follows excellent feedback from taste testing down under. Red Stripe officials say the venture into the Australian market is part of plans to position the brand as a key global player. Thanks a lot, Jason. Let's now take a look at the week's closing numbers from the major markets in the US, Europe, Asia and Kingston. Angela Laidley has more business news stories for you after the break. But before we go, here's a look at the currency market. Welcome back to Weekend Business Report. Andrew is back with some more of the major news stories BATV brought you this week. Andrew. Thanks again, Keneal. Trinidadian Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley says his country is prepared to work with Jamaica to develop the region. Here's more. None of us in this Caribbean region is better off alone. We are all better off working together. Trade and immigration issues between Trinidad and Tobago and Jamaica have finally been put to rest. This after a week-long visit by Trinidadian Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley, who has said the disagreement was largely due to misunderstandings from both nations. And I leave Jamaica confident that whatever flickered would not turn into a flame. Because the week I spent here, I have not met one person young or old, male or female, high station or low, who has said to me or implied to me that we are not better off together and that we are not brothers and sisters in this region. Dr. Rowley pointed out that strengthening regional ties is very important now, especially since Britain is moving in the direction of cutting ties with our former colonies. Where would Trinidad and Tobago stand if Britain joins the common market? What's today's question? Today's question is, where would the Caribbean stand if Britain leaves the common market? Question is, are we as prepared now to treat with the decisions being made outside as we were in those days when the question was whether we can survive Britain going into the common market and losing our market space losing our preferential treatment, and in some cases, losing our identity. The Trinidadian Prime Minister also indicated that the University of the West Indies is a firm example of what regional cooperation can achieve. We have to have the raw material. We have to have the foundation. And we have to have the human capital that is prepared to be spent on it. And when we look for that, the best place to find it, when we don't find it on the West Indies cricket field, we find it in UWI. 
Meanwhile, Dr. Rowley says his meetings with members of the Jamaican private sector have settled trade concerns. Anthony Morgan reports. Trinidad and Tobago and Jamaica will have increased partnerships going forward after Prime Minister of the Republic Dr. Keith Rowley convinced the Jamaican private sector that removing TNT products from the shelves was not necessary. There were issues raised and there will always be issues raised where you're trading goods and services. But I had very cordial relationships while I was here during the week discussing and responding to these issues. And I can tell you that I leave here with this feeling that the local business community um, is satisfied that there are no deliberate impediments to trade. And in fact, they are excited about um, doing what Prime Minister Holness said, which is expanding Jamaica's footprint into Trinidad and the rest of the region. There were some misunderstandings, but nothing that could not have been cleared up by frank and clear discussions on the matter, and that's what we've done. And the Jamaican Prime Minister Andrew Holness says the two countries have come to an agreement regarding issues of free movement after a few heated discussions. We both discussed structural impediments to trade and we discussed ways in which through cooperation we could navigate around those structural impediments such as looking at the restoration of a trade desk in both our ministries of trade and commerce. Uh, things like that will help to ensure the, the ease of trade, and not just trade in goods, but hassle-free travel across the region. So once there is the government-to-government -government will to cooperate and address the issue, then I think we would have made significant success. Dr. Rowley noted the importance of public sector workers abiding by the laws of the revised Treaty of Shagaramas. He was supported by Prime Minister Holness, who says he will make it his point of duty to ensure that the Jamaican population is aware of what can and cannot be done across regional borders. I think what the business community wanted to be assured is that there were no um, encouraged... Uh, Entrenched. And, yeah, non-tariff barriers, and that there were genuine efforts made to allow our public servants who are the administrators of these treaties to understand what we have signed on to and to execute in a way that is in the letter and spirit of the treaties and regulations that we have signed on to. And I, I would also want to add that the discussions were not only on the trade of goods. CARICOM as a single market means the movement of all factors of production. So it is the free movement of goods, the free movements of capital, finance, and labor. But free movement doesn't mean free for all movement. It means structured movement. And there are rules for movement. And we also had a very frank discussion about that. And the Jamaican government undertook to explain to the Jamaican population the rules Prime Minister Andrew Holness says he's willing to put in the work necessary to ensure the economic viability of entrepreneurs. The Prime Minister was speaking at the Development Bank of Jamaica's Ignite Awards a few days ago. Here's more. Micro, small and medium-sized enterprises, MSMEs, were assured today that they have the full support of Prime Minister Andrew Holness in their business ventures. Being Prime Minister doesn't mean that I'm ensconced in an office somewhere. It really means that I have to be at ground zero where the action is. And the action is right here with you, the people who will make the Jamaican economy grow and bring prosperity to the people of Jamaica. If you want to grow your economy, the first thing that you will have to do is to grow firms. If you want to grow your economy, you don't grow government, you grow business. Is that a secret? Is that a mystery? Is that straightforward? So government has to be deliberate and instrumental, has to be on the shop floor where the action is in supporting the growth of firms. The Prime Minister gave the entrepreneurs the stamp of approval by highlighting their efforts as the foundation of the island's economic growth and job creation thrust. And what I have been focusing on in the first four or five months of the administration is to use foreign policy to seek out new markets and establish new relationships. Because the truth is that the Jamaican market is limited. For, for our firms to truly grow, we have to treat CARICOM as our market as well. 
and to use CARICOM as a launching pad for Latin America. Not just North America. Prime Minister Holness encouraged the DBJ awardees to take full advantage of CARICOM markets and operate without limits in the region. We also must now start to see China as a market for Jamaica. All we need is 1% of 1% of the Chinese market. So, my government, we are playing the role of the market maker. We are developing the entrepreneurs, we are matching resources with opportunity, but we are also going out there bilaterally. That's the WBR News Roundup for this week. Back to you, Kanil. Thanks, Andrew. Now, when we come back, we'll tell you how one entrepreneur in Brazil is grabbing an opportunity with both hands. More WBR after the break. Welcome back to Weekend Business Report. Not every competition in Rio will be one that's on the official Olympic schedule. So one entrepreneur is making sure you have the equipment you need to finish ahead of the pack. Take a look. With the Olympic Games about to begin in Rio, one Brazilian entrepreneur says everyone can be an athlete. The Hot Flower Sex Shop in Sao Paulo has revealed its new line of Olympic-themed sex toys. The range is called Sex Athletes and consists of gels for the lower regions which cool or heat up, vibrators, costumes. It's a complete range which references the Olympic Games. In the weeks before the start of the Games, factory workers are getting busy packaging and inspecting various items bearing the colors of the Olympic rings as well as costumes representing the colors of some national flags. So even if you can't compete in Rio, you still can be part of the action. And that's all the time we have for this week's show. Thanks for watching. On behalf of Paul, Jason, Andrew, and the entire Weekend Business Report team, I'm Kenya. See you next time.